And welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today is the last video in my series on MRI. And today I want to talk about how the MRI knows where the signal is coming from in terms of the body. Now, if you remember right from the beginning that our body is aligned in a strong magnetic field, and that strong magnetic field determines the precession of the M of your hydrogen atoms as they align in that magnetic field. And if you remember, what we have is, is that the frequency, the Lamo frequency, is determined by the geometric ratio by the magnetic field over 2 pi. So the magnetic field determines the frequency of the Lamo frequency. But when we place the body in a strong magnetic field, if we base it solely on this external magnetic field, which is usually in the range of a couple of Tesla, you appreciate the fact that every hydrogen nuclei will have the same frequency. Now, how does the MRI machine know where the signal is coming from? In order to help us understand that, we need to understand that this is the only magnetic field in the MRI. So here we have our strong magnetic field. And the first thing that happens is that we have an, another set of coils that places a weak gradient magnetic field in the same direction of our net external magnetic field. Now, the strength is actually quite weak. So even though we have a magnetic field, and let's call it the green word would be in the order of about two Tesla, the magnetic field of the yellow one will be only a fraction of that. The magnetic field might vary anywhere from point, let's say in this example, 0.01 Tesla in the negative value to positive 0.01 Tesla in the positive value. What that means is the combined magnetic field here varies as we go from left to right. But of course, that is only fine if we want localization in the horizontal direction. What if I now apply another magnetic field? In this case, it goes into the page. And so we now again do the same thing. And we may have a variation of a magnetic field that may only vary a fraction of a Tesla as it goes into the page. Finally, of course, we can also add a vertical uh, gradient magnetic field that goes again up the page. Again, it will vary as we go up. So the end result is, is that over the external magnetic field, we superimpose three magnetic fields, or what we refer to as gradient magnetic fields, in three different directions. What that means is, is that every single section of your body, and it's divided up into a small section called a voxel, and think of it like an image which has a pixel that makes an image. Your three-dimensional body has a small space, fluid um, body uh, space, and it's about uh, the size of uh, a couple of millimeters across. Each voxel will have a different frequency that would be the uh, Lamor frequency because of the fact that of these different gradient fields applied to the body. So every single part of your body now has a different Lamo frequency. So the MRI machine, of course, sends out a whole bunch of frequencies. But the point is, is that the MRI machine will also pick up different frequencies from different areas. That's in essence what happens. It's much more technical than that, of course. But it's these gradient magnetic fields that helps the MRI determine the position of the signal that it receives. So now let's briefly have a summary. Number one, we talked about net spin. The importance that hydrogen nuclei have a spin, and as a result, they act like a mini magnet. Number two, we talked about an external magnetic field. And of course, that means you get alignment to that magnetic field, and you get the concept of precession. Of course, many are parallel up, but a few are parallel down. Number three, we talked about resonance. A radio frequency is applied and two things happen. First, we have more going to spin down or what they call spin flip. 
And secondly, the procession goes in phase. That of course leads to a 90% knockdown. Number four, we have relaxation. And relaxation of course can be spin-spin relaxation and spin-lattice relaxation. And in essence, what we have is energy being released, which is picked up as a radio frequency. But of course, the rate at which that happens, the spin lattice and the spin spin, leads to T1 and T2 weighting. And number five, the localization is determined by the gradient magnetic field superimposed over the large external magnetic field. Now, if you are at university studying radiology, this is probably quite simplified, but in essence, that summarizes how an MRI works. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.